Metal Jesus here, and I am in Dave's garage. Thanks, Metal Jesus. Welcome to my garage. So, last time we met, uh, I walked you and the viewers through some of the mini 3D printed consoles and computers that I make. Yes. Uh, and some people rightly ask a question in the comments, oh, they're very cute, but what do they do? Yeah, do they work? <laughs> yeah, that was a great question. Yeah. So, uh, there are in fact some of the things we built that do work, and so I want to share with everyone mm -hmm. today uh, what we call our G series, which are desktop arcade machines. And we have two models: one that runs on NES cartridges, and one that runs on Atari Twenty Six Hundred cartridges. And so we're going to show what these things do and how we build them. Yeah, it's awesome. There's three D printing involved. There's laser cutting. There's all sorts of, of geeky magic. Great, dangerous stuff. Let's take a look. Dude, so what do we got here? All right, so these are the uh, two models that we sell, plus one custom, which a customer asked us to build specifically for it. Uh, this one here is the Model G2. So this is an Atari 2600 uh, machine. Uh, what you get on this one is you get arcade quality controls as an actual arcade joystick. Uh, we've got arcade buttons, and then because you can't play 2600 games without having a paddle controller, of course, we have a built-in paddle wheel as well, right? So the nice thing about this one is it's built on the uh, uh, Flashback 2, which is a one of those uh, kind of put everything onto a single chip and sell as a device you plug into your TV. Um, we added a cartridge socket to that, so you can play one of the 40 built-in games or stick in, you know, your own cart, take your arrow, pop it in the back or whatever it is, and then away you go, right? Uh, so then the next one that I want to talk about is this one here. This is actually the prototype that's got everything started. So it's a little bit different from the production model, which uh, we'll talk about as well. Uh, this is the G1, so this is an NES-based machine. Um, you stick a NES cartridge in the back, there it is. Um, you power it on and away you go, right? So what you have here is also it's powered by um, a kind of Nintendo and a chip hardware clone as well, um, which is cool because it makes it very compact. Now there's a downside to this because as most people probably know, some games just don't work on those, right? And that's something we're trying to figure out for the next generation. So again, you've got the arcade quality button, you've got your uh, controllers here, start select and um, that's that one running. And then the final one is this one, which we've kind of called the G3. Uh, this one's actually a custom job put out by a uh, guy who should be father of the year. His name is Craig, he comes from Nova Scotia. And uh, what Craig wanted to do is the Genesis was absolutely his favorite console from him when he was a kid. So now that he's got kids of his own, he wanted to share that with him. So he commissioned us to build this custom Genesis for him. And we did it as a, a big collaboration with him. So you'll notice it looks very different from the others. You know, my personal choice is the black and wood and, very kind of sedate, but he wanted something big and colorful and 90s looking. So he actually gave us the design for the screen bezel. He did all the artwork design himself and we were able to incorporate the things that he needed into the device, which was really fun. All right, dude, how do you make these things? This is the Atari Flashback 2. Uh, this is what powers the uh, G2. Uh, so you'll notice that this guy, when you buy it, uh, it comes with, I think it's 40 built-in games. Pretty good games, actually. It's, it's not a bad deal. Um, but of course, we want to be able to stick in cartridges, right? So that the magic is adding a cartridge slot to this guy. All right, so that entire box, and that is actually the magic goo, right? This is actually the Atari itself, right? So that is, uh, that emulates the 6502, the Tia, and whatever else the other chip was called, I forget. This thing up here is kind of like the built-in cartridge with the 40 games, right? Now, luckily, the guys who made this semi-open sourced it, because if you look on the back, in this table here, they actually tell you how to wire it up, right? So it'll tell you that the pin that is marked one on this page needs to connect to A7, etc. You can look up on the internet which of these pins is A1 through A7 and D0 through D7, stands for address and data. And then on the back here, we now need to look, and you'll see some of these test points have got a number next to them. There's 8765. That's it, right? So now we know number eight needs to be connected to A0. So we look up on the net which one of these pins is A0. We just wire it to that. So that's how it that works. And then this is joystick ports. We need to tap these pins down here to go up to the stuff on the surface, etc. So. So 
So uh, the way this works is this is the front part which faces you as you play. Then we have a kind of bottom layer and the bottom layer contains a opening here for putting the uh, 9 volt socket in. That's where power is going to come in. And then we have a top layer which comes on top like this. And then we will glue all that together to form one complete shell, uh, which ends up looking something like this, right? Uh, and then of course on top, we will do the, take a piece of plywood, which has been laser cut, and then add the controls to that, right? So uh, the rest that goes in here is all the electronics and so on, which is kind of the, the interesting and fun part. Now, the thing to remember about this is, you may remember from the last video, I said that 3D printing was kind of slow. This here is 16 hours printing, right? So we're not exactly like, you know, push a button and these things just kind of fall through the chute. Um, you know, these things are all held together with screws, obviously. Uh, so what we need to do is you need to take this device, which is called the tap, I'm sure people have used this. And then we have holes 3D printed into the material. Now the 3D printer is not accurate enough to print the screw threads, right? So the tap lets us cut uh, the screw threads into this. It is possible to break one of these pieces when you're doing the tapping because of course you're stressing the part. So we have a, uh, a rule which says first tap, then glue, which sounds like a disgusting sexual reference, and perhaps it is. Uh, and the reason for that is if I break this part, then I've only wasted three hours of printing as opposed to the 16 I would break when everything's glued. Because once you glue these things, there is no ungluing them. So at this stage, what we have is we have the shell with all the electronics built in. Uh, we've got the uh, cartridge slot PCBs here, right? The controller board is sitting at the bottom here. Here we have a power distributor. So what this does is it'll take the nine volts, which we plug in here and it'll convert it to five for the, uh, um, the actual NES machine, the power light and the amplifier, which is kind of hidden back there. We use a kind of third party amplifier uh, thing. And also the volume control, which is this little PC board in there. Um, and of course the speaker, um, and then we've got the uh, volume controls on the side, and they are just micro switches on this post. And then we've got power and reset, we just steal those buttons from the actual uh, NES device. So you kind of glue everything, it's divided into two chambers, and the reason we do that is when you insert a cartridge in here, uh, obviously you're uh, adding a lot of force to the structural member, right? Especially when you, and also the hard part is you're doing it in both directions, right? When you insert it, you're applying force this way, and when you're pulling it out, you're stressing it the other way. So we kind of center everything along this beam in the, in the middle. This is the control deck. We haven't screwed the little ball top on yet, uh, but this is what it looks like when you've got the uh, buttons in place. Uh, so like I said, this is an arcade style joystick, which is very clicky and awesome, but giant. Um, I try to add little messages, like I was building one over Christmas, so it said Merry Christmas, but I'm not that anyone's ever gonna see that, but you know. And then this part here is the bracket which holds the, the screen, right? Uh, all the connections are uh, named, so this one says Joy, so we just need to find the one that says Joy here. And they're also keyed, so that way we know that they need to go in this direction and we don't have them reversed. Uh, reversing them could be very bad. Some of these connections carry five volts, and if you do them the wrong way, you'll just pop apart and then waste a bunch of money, so. You connect everything up, then you carefully lay them in, and away you go. This one should be inside, but we leave it outside for testing. So what's left to go on this machine is we need to put the screen inside the actual screen housing, uh, and then put the arms in. Uh, and then if you look at the bottom, that's where the speaker is. One of the nice things about having such a giant box, by the way, is that it sounds awesome. It gets a lot of bass, because this whole thing becomes a resonance chamber, so that's a pretty cool side effect. So that was awesome. Thanks for walking us through the building of your G1, G2, and also your Genesis uh, custom thing. But you have bigger plans, don't you? Yeah, so um, one the things that we like about this series is the mm. design. I think that's very cool. People mm. are very excited by it. Yeah. Um, but the, the kind of internals, um, working with these pre-made machines takes uh -huh. a lot of work. You've got to basically destruct something and then reconstruct it. Yeah. So we are planning to do a next generation, which we're kind of in design process now. Mm -hmm. And the idea is it'll be software powered, so we'll be able to support a lot more machines. Dude, that sounds uh, awesome. We'll be able to have a Spectrum inside one of these Perhaps machines. Perhaps a Commodore 64? I don't know, I'm just a Commodore 64, all right. <laughs> uh, and so you'll, the device will have a much higher quality screen. We'll be able to run a lot more uh, different consoles and computers on it so hmm. we want to kind of go down that road because really that kind of technology for that uh, it just it's so cheap right now right it's really a great place to try it so if you want to keep up with what's going on uh, like us on Facebook uh, rabbit engineering is the name of the group 
Uh, we will post updates over there about how the design is going and how things are progressing. Yeah, he's definitely really active on there. So, so like his page and uh, and keep up on everything that you're working on. Right. It's Cheers. awesome. Cheers. Ah, oh, look at that cute little bunny. Get him, bunny. Get him. Get your food. That's why they call it rabbit engineering. Hey guys, hope you liked this video. If you want to see more, please check out my website. Thanks.